Welcome to the webinar on how to break into commercial painting. So we're going to get started here. Um, so let's dive right in. So in this webinar, we're going to take some of the mystery away from commercial painting and show you how you can successfully build your commercial business or add it to your business without all the risks and uncertainty that usually come with commercial work. More specifically, what we're going to cover, how to build a recurring book of business with relationships that keep handing you jobs year after year, and those relationships make introductions for you to gain more of those kind of relationships where you're doing projects with large job sizes, high profit percentages and margins, and good payment terms, and how you can start planting the seeds for this right now. Okay, so that's really what this is about and, and what's most exciting about commercial painting and what I've learned over the last six months is, is exactly this. It's really about building this recurring book of business. And a recurring book of business is you've got relationships that just keep handing you work. And once you start to get these relationships that keep handing you work, they introduce you to more people who will hand you work. The kind of work we're aiming for is big projects, large job sizes with good healthy profit margins and health and good payment terms. And we're gonna talk about how you can start planting the seeds for that right now, even if you're not going full blown commercial painting. So how we're gonna cover this is, first I'm gonna to talk to you about the commercial painting market segments and just introduce you to that, which I think is really valuable. Um, so I'm excited to share that with you. And then how to build recurring business. So we're just gonna look at kind of the high level overview and process of how this business works. It's very different from residential painting. And then I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the Painting Business Pro commercial painting course, um, because First of all, that's the point of the webinar. But second, this is, this is how we're going to help you do this without all the risks. Um, of course, I can't teach you everything you need to know in an hour to an hour and a half webinar. So we'll let you know a little bit about this program and course, and then we'll wrap up with some Q&A. So if you have any questions as we go through the webinar, put those in the chat and we'll answer them at the end. And then uh, who am I to talk about all this anyways? So if you don't know who I am, uh, my name is Eric Barstow. I'm the founder of Painting Business Pro. So I've been teaching people on the internet how to start and build their painting company since 2013. I have over 2,000 members in my program who have used the residential painting course to implement proven business systems and practices to really grow their painting company. So I have a, a, dozens of people who have built over a million dollar painting company at this point. Um, and hundreds more who have significantly increased their income and, and built a really great business. So um, I do that, but also um, I run painting companies. So I started my painting business in 2010 and since then started 15 other painting companies. Um, we sold eight of those, uh, we closed eight of those, we sold four. I still operate four painting companies as an owner or co-owner and those four companies do about seven and a half million dollars in 2020, um, up about 20% from last year. So um, I practice what I preach. Before I started my own painting business, I worked at a college painting company teaching college students how to start and build a painting business as an internship. So I've spent about 15 years coaching people in the painting business on business. So I'm not the guy that's going to teach you everything about the trade. I'm not the guy who's going to teach you everything about the craft and trade of painting. I'm the business guy that's going to teach you business planning, strategy, marketing, sales, pricing, um, project planning, building systems, scaling companies, hiring and building team members. That's what my specialty is. So um, I'm no commercial painting expert either. Um, what I'm going to share with you is what I've learned working with a couple of commercial painting experts for the last six months. And the guys I've been working with, I'll introduce you to later, it's Scott and Greg. Um, those are the people who I've learned from and these are a couple of the things I've learned that's going to be really valuable. So um, anyways, we'll get to more of that uh, throughout the webinar. So let's dive right in to the introduction to the commercial painting market segment. So the first thing to introduce here is that commercial painting is not as simple as just commercial painting. Okay, there's different aspects to it. So when I first wanted to start getting into this business, this is what I needed to figure out is where do I want to be and, and what's the different, what are the different segments Where's their good work? Where's their bad work? Where's their higher margins? Where's their low margins? Where's their more risk? Where's there's less risk? That's what we wanted to look at. So, um, so there's really, to, to keep this simple, there's really four segments of the market in commercial painting. And we go into a little bit more detail 
than this in the course, but there's commercial repaints and there's light commercial repaints and large commercial repaints. Then there's general contractor. There's light GC work and large GC work, just referring to the size and scope of the projects. There's, in, there's light industrial and industrial, and then there's government and public work. So we're gonna dive into a little bit more detail about all four of these segments. So commercial repaint, uh, your customers in commercial repaint are building owners and investors, property managers, and HOAs, mostly. Sometimes it might be a business owner who owns their building. Um, you might work for community managers or asset managers. There might be other titles, but essentially these are the customers. We're working directly for the building owner or the, the commercial real estate investor, or working for the property management company that manages the property, or working directly for an HOA that oversees you know, the condominium complex, the townhome complex, the apartment complex, the home, home association and all the homes and like that. What types of work are in this segment? Um, hospitality, retail, churches, restaurants, tenant improvement, um, whether that's business offices and business tenants or residential, like apartments, condos, townhomes, um, business offices, um, both interior and exterior, all these could be interior and exterior. And then take the word small away, because that's if we we're talking about light commercial repaint. It's just HOA and housing. So that could be condos, townhomes, single family communities. And then also we could do medical offices and buildings, take away the small word. So this is the type of work. Now the pros to the commercial repaint market is you're usually working directly with the owner or directly with the person responsible for maintenance on behalf of the owner. Payment is predictable. We know when we're gonna get paid. It's not difficult to get paid. Terms for payment are negotiable. For example, if you're doing work for a property manager, they already have the money sitting there in an account for the maintenance budget. It's sitting there ready to be spent. So the money's there, the payment's predictable, and the terms are negotiable. You can take down payments, you can take progress payments, and so on, which means minimal cash flow is required, um, not due to the smaller job sizes. That would be referring just to light commercial. Minimal cash flow is required because of the, pay the flexible payment terms. Now, you also shouldn't go from doing you know ten thousand dollar job to an eight hundred thousand dollar job you should step that up slowly even in any one of these segments but uh cash flow is is a benefit here compared to some of the other segments projects are similar to what you currently do so if you're a residential painter right now then your these types of projects are pretty similar you know if you do i'm in my office right now and if you look around it's very similar to painting the interior of a home if you were to paint the interior of this office. We did the outside of this building and it was pretty similar to painting the outside of a home. It's a little taller and we need to use a different product because it's metal, but it wasn't very different from painting a home. Um, if you're doing townhomes, condos, uh, apartment complex, these are kind of big houses. So that's what's nice is projects are similar to what you currently do. So there's, there's not as many surprises on types of work that you already do and repaints. And what's really nice about that is you can use the same subcontractors or painters that you currently use. The downside to commercial repaints is timing of their projects. Sometimes the timing isn't very flexible. Um, they might be working on deadlines or something like that. And then sometimes you need off hours work schedules. So you may need to work nights or weekends. But this is the segment where you might paint a, you know, we've done some of these and they've worked out really well. We did a Right across the street, there's a $75,000 job we did, or we made $35,000 in profit on it. Um, so it's very profitable. It took us 10 days to do, and it was basically a, a condominium town or uh, apartment building. So uh, really great jobs, high margins, um, stuff you already know how to do. Also, what's nice is you already know how to estimate these jobs as well. All right, general contractor. So this segment. Uh, so here, your customers are general contractors. You're working for general contractors. They're the ones you're putting your bids into. They're the ones hiring you. And the type of work in this segment is new construction or renovations. Um, so it could be something built from the ground up or a re redo or renovation of some sort. So the pros to general contractor stuff is once you have a relationship, they keep giving you work, right? If you do a job for a general contractor and it goes well and you really nurture that relationship, they're gonna need a painter on basically every single job they do. So once you're in, they're gonna keep giving you a lot of work. So that's, that's really good once you have a good relationship. 
business to business makes the sales process easier once you have that relationship because it's not really a sales process. They're basically just getting a price from you and you're doing it. And then good relationships here can be really, really good for those first two reasons. A good relationship is like, you know, they're professional, they're organized, they pay you well, they pay you on time, they're, they're ethical. That's what we mean by good relationship. Good margins, good payment terms, they're organized on top of their stuff so they're not making your life hard and they're ethical. Um, and I bring up ethical because that's one of the cons is there's a lot of unethical general contractors. So cons, uh, working around other trades uh, can be a pain in the ass. Uh, projects can last a long time because a whole renovation or a whole new construction project can just last a long time. Payment can be difficult to get or take a long time to get. Um, you know, we did a, jo a job for, uh, they were renovating a Rite Aid pharmacy and we did the painting, it was 30,000. Took us nine months to get paid. We finally got paid because Rite Aid seized the books of the general contractor because they weren't paying any of their subs. And Rite Aid started issuing checks out. That's how we finally got paid is we complained to Rite Aid enough that they stepped in and took over. So um, it can be difficult to get paid or take a long time to get paid. Usually it's smaller margins, smaller profit margins, because the GC is putting in a bid for the amount and then they're trying to get everything done for as little as possible to make their profit margin. Now there's some GCs that will bid cost plus. So they're charging the customer. So if you're charging more, they're still making their same percentage. In fact, since they're making a percentage on top, they actually make a little more if you charge more. So there's some GCs where margins are better than others, but usually this is gonna be um, something you'll run into. There's risk working with general contractors who you don't already have a working relationship with. So there's a lot of shady GCs out there. Um, and this is not my words. This is what I've gathered from all the people I've spoke to. Um, I've heard people say, I think general contractors go through a class on how to screw people. Um, they've just, that reputation has been earned. Now, obviously that's not all general contractors, but um, Greg, who I'll introduce you to at the end here, um, that's all he does is do work for general contractors. And he's been totally stiffed before um, where the GC said, hey, I, I owe you 10 grand. Um, I'm not gonna pay you. So if you want to get that money, you're going to have to put a return, an attorney on retainer. That's going to cost you four grand. I'm going to drag this out as long as possible. It's going to end up costing you seven or $8,000 and you're not even going to get paid in full. So it'd be stupid for you to do that. So we're just going to call this good and you're kicked off the job. And it's true. There's nothing that you can do. Um, and that happened to my friend as well, who didn't get paid $90,000 at the end of a job. He was right at the end. They kicked him off. They owed him 90 K for work he had completed. They didn't pay him. He took him to court. It took a year in court and he ended up getting paid 50,000 of the 90. So these are the, the, the risks. Um, we'll get to um, how to avoid some of these risks later, but um, that's a risk. And then I had another friend uh, who didn't get paid $140,000 on a project. So the other thing is it's a little more complex with bidding, estimating in the production process, right? We're bidding and estimating from blueprints. There's just more detail in there. And then the production process, you're working around other trades. You might be doing it in different pieces and segments. And um, it's just a little more detail. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, we can, you know, this might look bad. It's not all bad because you can make systems to work around other trades. You can prepare for projects to last a while. Um, these things aren't really a problem. These first three, if you find a really good contractor to work with. Margins don't always need to be bad. You can avoid risk once you find someone good to work with. And complex isn't a bad thing. It just means you need better systems. And that's something we have put together. So it's not bad, but it's not as good as repaints. Okay, then we have industrial. Who are your customers? Uh, general contractors, building owners and investors, facilities managers, corporations. Types of work here, industrial coatings. Um, that's like steel you know, painting steel. And this kind of goes into public work a little too, but water towers, bridges, um, steel tanks, um, you know, painting pipes on top of buildings could be some of that type of stuff. Warehouses, really large warehouses or distribution centers, big box stores could fit in here as well. Um, Costco's, um, possibly Walmart, especially if we're talking new construction on those. And then manufacturing as well. 
pros to this is aesthetics not as important. So imagine if you're doing a warehouse, um, they don't care about clean lines as much um, as a showroom would or a uh, you know townhome would. So aesthetic is not as important. So it doesn't require to skill the workforce. These can be really large and easy jobs. So for example, there's an Amazon distribution center that just went up 45 minutes from here. Um, it was probably a, a quarter million for 300, $400,000 job. I don't know, but it's definitely in the hundreds of thousands was the size of paint job. And it's basically one giant box. So you've got all these lifts and you're just spraying a huge building. So can be large, can be easy. Cons, um, sometimes when you get into industrial stuff, you're going to need training and certifications. Uh, you're going to need different types of equipment for different applications, different coatings, respiratory stuff, safety stuff. There's more complexity in these projects sometimes, especially a warehouse or distribution center, manufacturing center that's still operating while you're doing it. Um, record keeping can become an issue if you're doing stuff like water towers, bridges, or you're doing steel coatings, or you need things that are um, fire prevention or, or, or can withstand heat. So there's record keeping, there's more safety, more testing. Sometimes there's lower profit margins here. Again, depends on who you get in with and who you're working for. Um, and then cash flow and capital requirements can be difficult on large long lasting projects. One of the thing I noticed, um, and this is just kind of a side note, but when I was speaking with a whole bunch of different commercial painting contractors, when I started my, my own research, um, it seems to me that this segment is, there's some better competitors. Um, there's some big boys out there that are really, really on top of their stuff from a business standpoint. So the, the quality of the competition is a little better in this segment, um, partly because it, because of these things, you know, you have to have training, training certifications, you have to be detailed and have good record keeping, safety, testing, different types of equipment. And, um, you know, the guy I talked to, they're like just murdering it, um, in this segment. Government and public work is the last one. So this, this sector, your customers are general contractors who are hired by government or public work, working directly for government or public working for municipalities, IDOT, utilities. Types of work in this segment is schools, government and public buildings, water towers, infrastructure, wastewater treatment plants, just to name a few. Um, pros, uh, less competition, less people in this niche because of the cons. Um, it is uh, challenging and an entirely different business getting into government and public work. You can have some huge job sizes. You know, Roderick Richardson uh, goes by Rich. He's done some YouTube videos with me before. He's in our painting business pro group. He does a lot of schools and he does really, really well doing schools. Um, but if you watch his YouTube with me, he knows his stuff inside and out with regard to you know agreements and certifications and this all the complexity that goes into this. So the cons to public work um, is the complexity. And you know, one of the women I interviewed. Um, or spoke to, she runs a uh, public, a company that does all public work. And she said, Eric, you know, one of the tough things about this is, is the paperwork. She said, I've got a, I've got a three inch stack of paperwork on my desk right now for one job we're doing. So the record keeping is just insane. Um, you know, you've got to do certified payroll to make sure you're meeting the prevailing wage. She said, Eric, one time we messed up and we paid a guy one penny short and we had to go through, jump through all these hoops and get all these things notarized. And we had to cut them a check for 27 cents to make up the gap because, you know, it's government, it's government regulated, safety, testing, government regulation, union competition, and sometimes again, lower margins. Um, not always, but sometimes. So this sector though, um, really is a whole different ball game. And really all of these are, you know, you're doing very different types of work. You're working for different com different people, different requirements, different codings, different protocols. They really are four different segments. So when we really look at these four segments, the growth plan that we recommend in our in our training course after digging into this is to start with commercial repaints. Um, the only reason you would not start here is if you have a big background already in GC work, like you maybe you have a you have a heavy background in GC. Maybe you worked for a GC or you have some connections already there, but if you already have a heavy background there, same goes for industrial. If you already have a heavy background there and same with government, if you've already got a heavy background there, 
then you would have a competitive advantage in these areas. But if you don't, these are not the places probably to start, especially because commercial repaints, again, it's work you already know how to bid, you already know how to produce, the same crews you already have can do it, and the payment terms are friendly. And a lot of these customers, and you're going to find, what I'm going to show you is that these customers are just, any of these customers are just as easy to get to. These jobs are just going to be better for you. Easier, simpler. And the size of the commercial repaint market is huge. It's huge. You can go and build a multi-million dollar business on just commercial repaints. So there's really no reason to add these other segments until you've got this so dialed in where maybe you've got an estimator and a salesperson, you maybe got a project manager. So you're stepping out. It's growing on its own now, which we'll show you how to do that in a moment. It's already kind of growing on its own. And now you can say, okay, I've built that model. It's doing good. It's growing. Now I'm going to go build my GC model. So that's kind of the plan. It's, you know, start with commercial repaints. The next easiest place to step from there would be into GC. The next easiest place to step from there would be into industrial or, or government. These could each be, but you probably don't even need to do all four of these. I don't know if we ever will, because um, there's just so much business in just residential and commercial repaints. So now that we're clear what business we want to target, how do we start winning that business and building this network of of recurring business and refer and people are going to refer us. So how to build recurring business. This is kind of the overview of the process. So first we need to find customers, our customers again, in this, in, in the repaint situation is going to be property managers or HOAs or building owners and investors or other people like that with similar titles, but let's just use property managers as the example, as we go through the rest of the webinar. So first we need to find customers. So I need to find a property manager who wants to refer me business. And one thing we do is, you know, you're going to find people who have, you know, who have a need for a painter, but not all of them are who you necessarily want to work for. So we, we teach something called a discovery meeting. And in that discovery meeting, we're finding out, is this someone I want a relationship with? Do I want to work with them? Do I want to do the type of projects they do? Do they want what I want them to want. If all they want is the cheapest painter, that's not what I want. So if I ask them, for example, why don't you have another painter you work with already? And they say, uh, too expensive, too expensive, too expensive. We just need someone who can get jobs done as cheap as possible. I might not be interested in that relationship and wasting my time with it. So we find customers and identify the ones we want. Then we have this opportunity to bid. So once I find someone who has potential projects, they might not have one for me to bid yet, but at some point they will. And they're going to say, hey, Eric, I've got this project. Can you give me a bid? But then I need to determine before I do the bid, do I want to bid this project? Is this an ideal project? And do I have a good shot at winning it? Because some of these commercial projects are going to take you an entire day to bid. And what some people find out the hard way is they are being used as a third bid when the person they're bidding for never had any intention of hiring them, but they needed to get a third bid. Um, or, you know, one thing we've, we've talked about is negotiate, you know, in the world of general contracting, there's something called negotiated work and non-negotiated work. Non-negotiated work means there is, uh, because by the way, this, everything we're going to go through in the rest of the webinar applies no matter which of those segments you work in. And we go into detail in our course on each of the segments a little bit too. So in, if we're looking at, do I want to bid on this project? If I'm working with a GC, if it's non-negotiated work, that means the GC has not won the project yet. They're getting a bid from you to put in their bid. And so if it's a big project, there might be 10 GCs bidding and each GC is getting three painter bids. So you might be bidding against 30 painters. And if you win the bid, there's a good chance you're the low bid and you underbid the project. So non-negotiated work, you know, I have a friend who's bid, who bid like 50 projects for GCs and didn't win a single one. And, it, and then we learned this and it's like, oh, non-negotiated work. Negotiated work means they've already won the project and they're getting a bid. That's worth bidding on because you know they've already got the project. So this is an important step so you're not wasting a ton of time. Another example with our company was we were bidding on a insurance uh, claim job. 
And we said, well, what's the claim for? And they said 40K. And I said, okay, well, our bid's probably going to be higher than that. Um, if we're higher than that, uh, what are we going to do about that? Who's going to pay then? And we had to work that out. We did end up bidding the project. We did end up winning the, winning the project. Um, but we wanted to make sure that if we came in at 50, they weren't going to say, oh, well, we just can't do it. So you want to make sure it's worth bidding. And then we got to win the bid. Uh, the way we win a bid is with a detailed scope of work. I'll talk about more. Um, a good sales process. And then our contract and cover your ass stuff. Then we need to deliver a great experience. So this is the whole process. First, I find a potential customer. I get a chance to bid. They give me the bid. Then I deliver a great experience because I have a really good project planning process and project execution process. This also includes professionalism and just the cover your ass stuff with, you know, safety and record keeping and tenant notices and warranty and uh, um, job specific safety plans and all, all that stuff. So once we delivered a great experience, because we plan the project in detail, we had professionalism, then we just need to stay top of mind and make sure we nurture our relationships so that they keep giving us work. And that's the cycle. Now, if we get any of these wrong, we're, we're, we aren't going to build this recurring relationship. But if we get all these right, this is how we create one relationship that keeps feeding me work. So now how do we grow the whole commercial book of business? Well, one of the things we've said a lot in our course and that I've learned is that uh, what Scott said is the roots go everywhere. So one relationship leads to more relationships through networking and your reputation. So for example, John, the property manager there, he works at a property management company. There's other property managers at that same company. So one of the property management companies in town for us, they have, th there's 30 property managers who work for this company and they manage 600 HOAs. Now, John works there. Imagine I build this relationship with John and I deliver on all these things here. So John loves working with me. I make his life easy. Um, then what he's going to do is after I've done a couple great jobs for him, he's going to say, Hey, you know, some, some guy, Scott, maybe not Scott. I'm a, I've got a Scott. So Steve says, Hey, John, do you have any painters? The guy I, I use, they, they, they're dropping the ball. John refers us to, to Steve. And now we've got two customers. And then the other thing that happens is, you know, people move, people get fired, people quit their jobs. And so if John quits, moves or gets fired, moves down the road, where's he going to get a new job? Probably at another property management company. So he gets a new job. John takes his Rolodex with him and you still do John's jobs. That's what makes John a valuable project manager is he's already got all the people in place to be a great project manager for a project management company. Property management company. Sorry for my misspeaking. Okay. So you kind of get the, you get the gist though, right? So once I'm in with someone, they're going to rub elbows with other potential customers. They're going to move and, and take their Rolodex with them. Um, the other, the other way the roots go everywhere is trade referrals. Meaning, you know, if John needs an electrician and you re can refer him an electrician, that electrician is going to be pretty grateful when he's doing other commercial projects, he's eventually going to refer you and you start getting referrals from the other trades you're referring. So once you get in, you start acquiring new relationships. Those relationships, you just maintain them and they keep feeding you work. And then you keep adding more and you build this recurring book of business. So how do we do this? Well, there's a couple pieces. One is we need a foundation. So how do we get found for commercial jobs? You know, you can't even help it. If you're a residential painter and you're ranking on Google and being busy and growing your business, people are going to find you and you're going to get opportunities to bid commercial projects. That's just going to happen. But we can also be a lot more intentional about it. So how we get found is we make some changes to our website. We update our social media. We change our marketing message. We change up our newsletters and we start to present ourselves as a commercial painting contractor that is perfect for the type of projects we want. And then we also need a found to build our foundation for maintaining relationships. So we need to set up our CRM for how to maintain and keep in touch with all the relationships we're building. We need to have a system for email newsletters to stay top of mind. And we need to stay active on social media. That's another place to stay top of mind. So LinkedIn is a really big opportunity in uh, finding, building, nurturing commercial relationships. 
Then there's marketing. So this is how we might go and start to generate new potential relationships. Um, we can do cold outreach like Google, um, finding people on Google, sending emails, making phone calls, reaching out on LinkedIn. We can also reach out to our existing customers and say, hey, we do commercial projects. Do you know anyone? And start to put that into our marketing message. Um, there's some associations we can join where, you know, for example, BOMA is Building Owners Managers Association. Every, all building owners are in there. That's where your customers are. So join, you can join associations and work those associations. Um, so there's some more detail into how do you work associations most effectively. And then there's referrals and introductions, right? From the people you already work with. So the roots go everywhere. And the, the outcome of all of this is you have this slow, steady build in your commercial business. See, residential, you can get an, a lead today, do the estimate tomorrow, um, and, and do the job next week and be paid by next week. Commercial is going to be slower, but see, when you finish that residential job, you're done from there. Like they might not give you another job again for years, maybe never again. So you get it quick, but when it's done, it's done. This, you get it slow, but once you get it, it grows and grows and grows. So that's the big difference and what's really exciting here and why it's good to put some of these systems in place early so that your commercial business almost grows itself. So what do you really need to know to do this? Because there is, you know, I'm giving you a high level overview, but what do you really need to know? Well, one thing you need to know is how to identify the right kind of relationships and how to identify the right projects to bid on. Um, and part of that is the discovery meeting and some of our sales process. You also need to know how to create a detailed scope of work. So a scope of work is what we have called, what we've named this, but in our course we put together, it's a, it's a big long document with every single thing you need to think about when bidding a project to make sure you don't miss anything. And it's a really detailed checklist. You literally just fill out the whole thing and then we need to know how to build contracts. And our contracts are built from our scope of work to make sure it's very detailed. Our contracts are very professional. And this, oops, this is supposed to say CYA, cover your ass. Our contracts also need to have all of the right terms and conditions and acknowledgements. And all of this is not to prepare for a legal battle, it's to make sure that upfront, we have very clear terms for our agreement with this new relationship. Um, okay, so the next thing we need to know is, you know, well, the next thing we need to know is project planning. So basically, we take our scope of work in our contract, and we build out a project plan, very detailed planning ahead of time. This would include things like lifts, equipment, scheduling, change orders, tenant notices, warranty, documentation, safety plans, manpower, schedule, um, it, backup plans, et cetera. This is how we make sure that a project goes well. So um, just down the street from my house is where we did that $40,000 project. And we booked the project because of our, what we learned in, in, this, in this painting business pro course um, with Scott. We wouldn't have booked this project otherwise. So we booked this $40,000 job. We just finished it. Um, and it's just down the street from my house. So I drove by it all the time. And we did not do a great job. Um, we started the project before uh, I learned this project planning process. And so we got on the project and we kept running into hiccups we're like oh crap what didn't realize we needed a lift right there so then that delayed it a couple days and we're like wow didn't realize this we didn't have enough manpower so it took too long oh didn't we just didn't go through this whole planning checklist so the project took longer than it should have we looked more disorganized and sloppy than we should have and you know when my my partner ben went out and did the final walkthrough on this project the guy was like, he was happy with the end product. We made a good profit margin. He was happy with the end product, but the process was not great. And I don't think we're going to probably get, you know, he's not going to be dying to give us more business. I wouldn't be surprised if he shops our business next time or doesn't even ask us for a quote next time. So that's why we say what you need to know. We need to know all this because in order to have recurring business, you got to deliver. And if you miss something in the scope of work, you'll miss it in the contract and you'll miss it in the project planning.
Um, so, and if you miss any of these, it leads to kind of screwing up in the process a little, which is how we burn relationships. So essentially what I need to know is how do I deliver a professional experience to my customers from start to end? How do I make it, how do I make my property manager's job easy? So there's a process for all that. Now it really is so big picture. It's, it really is this simple. Now there's a ton of details within in the simplicity, but slowly we get one of these right relationships, the kind of person who has the kind of jobs we want. I find one of those relationships and then I find one more and then one more and those they spread as long as I do a great job all the way through. Now you've got this recurring book of business of exactly the kind of jobs that you want to do, right? So you know how to bid them. Your same crews can do them. Good margins, friendly payment terms. You do a few projects a year. I'm sorry, you do fewer projects a year with fewer customers. Um, it's less of a grind than residential. It's more stable through economic downturns because the budgets for maintenance are there in advance. You know, building owners need to maintain their assets. And there's, it's a little more consistent business. And if you ever want to sell, this is really valuable, this repeat recurring business. So a few examples. Um, so Matt is an example I've shared a lot about um, over the last six months. So he's a painting business pro member. And you know, he, in 2019, he had $900,000 in business. He made $300,000 in profit. And the only employee he has is a assistant. So he does all the estimates and sales. He does the project management and he made 300K net profit. He, had, he did that mostly, almost all that work was through seven relationships that give him work that he's developed over the last few years. That's it. And could you imagine doing $900,000 by yourself in residential? It would be very difficult. That is a lot. I mean, you're, you're managing, you know, $30,000 a week in projects, um, you know, maybe, maybe 25,000 a week in projects depending on your seasonality, um, you're doing, you're selling 25,000 a week yourself. It would be a nightmare trying to do $900,000 by yourself. But here he's doing it with seven, seven relationships and he's not doing a hundred bids to win 30. He's basically winning every bid he does because he's got relationships. So it's a lot more of a, it's just a different kind of business and it's really nice. So that's Matt's example. I'll talk more about him in a few minutes. And then Ty, she's someone in our court in our painting business pro commercial course. She just posted the other day in our Facebook group that she got in with a property manager who was managing this one unit in a strip mall. And she did two walls. She painted two walls. Maybe it was 1200 bucks, right? It was like not a big job, not that exciting, but she did the whole process, right? You know, she had, a, it, it was a good relationship. It was the right kind of projects. This was just a smaller one. She did this, right? She did a good contract. She delivered on the project. And then what happened is this property manager was given the whole contract for the whole strip, the whole strip mall. And now Ty is doing 15 of the full units, tens of thousands of dollars for that project. That's a good example. And then the Foothills example, you know, we've, we've accidentally stumbled into some of these kinds of relationships. There's a few of them we have. Um, the big apartment I might've mentioned earlier, um, or I might've mentioned before we started, but it's a $75,000 apartment building. And we did one and the next year we did the next one. And that property manager has other things she manages and we'll continue doing projects for her. And then we have another, uh, HOA, um, complex that we basically just do a couple of their buildings every year. It's like 30 K a year. So there's some, and some of you who do residential painting, you might have, you might have some of these relationships that have found you kind of by chance. Um, we just want to take those opportunities and capitalize to the max. And we want to know how to go out and find them and generate them. So this is kind of what we've covered so far is kind of a snapshot of the different segments and how building recurring business and commercial works and how you learn what you need to know, how you learn this stuff is you've got basically two options. You, one option is you can work for another commercial painting company. So that's Matt. Remember Matt on the last slide, 900K in business, 300K in profit. He worked for a commercial painting company before he got Painting Business Pro and before he started his business. So he already knew commercial painting. So he kind of went directly into that. 
Um, I believe the company he used to work for, I think he mentioned to me that they now do 70 million a year, big, big company. So he learned that way, but that's really not an ideal option because if you already own your company, you're not going to shut it down and go work for someone else to learn. And if you don't own your company yet, you probably don't want to wait two years if you don't have to. The other option is you can learn on your own by trial and error. And, and of course, I'm all I'm leading up to there's a third option, which is what we've built out, but I'll get to that. But basically, up until recently, there's really these two options to learn commercial painting. So if you were to learn on your own by trial and error, which is what we tried to do, and I decided that's a bad idea, we're not going to do that anymore. You can learn everything I showed you on your own. All of this stuff here, which this is not everything, but it's kind of the big bullets. There is more, but let's just look at this stuff. Identifying the right relationships and projects, scope of work, contracts, um, project planning. How do you learn what customers to work for or not work for? Well, the only way to learn that is to do work for customers. And sometimes you're going to get your ass kicked, you know, and what projects to bid or not bid. Well, the only way to learn that is to bid on projects and get your ass kicked and then say, wow, that's not a project I'm going to bid on in the future. Or wow, that was a huge waste of time. If I would have known upfront that you weren't going to pay an extra a dollar more than the insurance claim, I never would have bid this. And now you go in and that's going to be a question in your, in your sales process. So how you learn what customers not to work for is to work for bad customers, have a bad experience, and then circle back and learn from it. How do you learn what projects to not bid on? Well, you bid on them, waste your time, and then learn how to fix that in the future. How do you learn how to build a great scope of work to make sure you don't miss anything? Well, do the best you can with what you know today and then miss some things. You'll get your ass kicked, maybe lose some money and plug that in. And how many times are you going to learn lessons before you've, you're covering everything? It might be years of mistakes before you have your scope of work done great. I mean, it can cost a lot of money. How do you learn how to make great contracts? Well, go get yourself in some trouble and then start to add to your terms and conditions. So building all of this out and same with project, you're getting the picture, right? Project planning process, same thing. What about admin, safety plans, record keeping, change orders, legal, tenant notices, warranties, all of that. How do you know, how do you learn all this? It's literally through failure. And, you know, for us, uh, it's just one example. The reason, part of the reason we didn't want to learn this the hard way is we did this Kohl's department store. It's a $40,000 project. We made 20K. We did it in a week. It was awesome. Then we did another one. It was awesome. Then we did a third one and it was a $45,000 job. This one had a couple things that we missed because of our scope of work and a couple things we missed because of contract and a couple things we missed in the project planning process. The project ended up taking three months, cost us $55,000 to do. So we lost 10 grand. It took three months and we had one of our best crews tied up on a project forever. It created all kinds of issues. It was super stressful. And we were like, screw this. We're not going to touch commercial work until we know what we're doing because that one, pro that one problem wasn't worth it. I mean, that, that one issue and we were like, we're just going to run into so much more because we don't know what we're doing. So this is what I wanted to avoid. I wanted to avoid learning this on my own. So when COVID happened, beginning of 2020, I needed to change my game plan for the year. And I thought, you know, this might be a great opportunity for me to build my commercial painting model. So I set up all these interviews. I reached out to everyone I know. Fortunately, I'm pretty connected in the painting industry. And I just started talking to all these different commercial painting contractors. I talked to people. I mentioned earlier, I talked to a woman who does all public work and government work. I talked to a guy who built, has a, $10 million industrial company. I've talked to people who do all stuff for GCs. I talked to people who do repaints. I talked to people who do just a little bit of everything. Um, so I did all these interviews. And I, the first thing I started to learn was I under, started to understand the different segments and which one I wanted to focus on and not focus on. But the other thing I learned is there is a lot to learn. You know, for me to build this model, you know, I was trying to do it by just picking people's brains and piecing it together. And I got clear, like my pages, I had pages and pages and pages of notes. 
and questions. And I'm like, I can't, I can't get these questions answered for free. Like people were really generous. I did all, all these people just did calls with me for free and shared tons of information for free. And I was super grateful. Like, I'm never going to be able to do this on, you know, people's free time. So I need to hire someone. I need to hire a coach. I need to hire a consultant. So that's what I started looking at. And, you know, there's one person who was a, a standout to hire, to consult me and help me build this business. And um, I'll get to him in a minute. But once I realized I'm going to hire a consultant to help me build this model, you know, I said, Hey, and instead of just hiring, you know, working with this guy to build my model, why don't we partner up and build this whole thing for this industry? Because the truth is I would, I would not have built this course. If this course already existed, I would have just bought it because what I really wanted was to have a, a model for how to get into commercial painting without learning everything the hard way. I wanted a system. And, you know, unfortunately, people who run a commercial painting business don't want to give away their system. Why? Because it, it's proprietary. It's a trade secret. But you know who is okay with giving away systems is a consultant. So Scott is the guy I partnered with, Scott Lawler. You may know him. If you don't, you'll be glad you know him. Um, so Scott's kind of the head coach of the program. He's the true commercial painting expert in this program. Everything I'm telling you is what I've learned from Scott. He's spent his entire working career in the painting industry and specifically in the commercial industry. He lives in sub suburbs of Chicago. He owns a company called Consulting for Contractors, where he's a highly recommended commercial painting consultant working with clients all across the U.S. Here's some of his accomplishments. So Scott's been in the uh, commercial painting industry for 30 years true veteran of our industry. He's an expert in operations and scaling commercial painting companies, which he's demonstrated over a long career. He has managed a uh, multi-million dollar growth in multiple different commercial painting companies as a general manager. One was in Boston, one was in Chicago, um, among others. So as the general manager, he was overseeing all operations, right? new client acquisition, sales, estimating, project planning, management, hiring and growth, the whole damn thing, which is what makes Scott a really, really valuable resource is he knows the whole of it. He doesn't know just sales or just product management. One of the companies he was the general manager of, he won the Inc. 5,000 fastest growing companies in America multiple years in a row. He's been a PCA, Painting Contractors Association speaker, national He's been residential forum, AST, Lincoln State Council, California Council, a past PCA residential forum board member, a past PCA education committee member, and he's a consultant and go-to coach for 30 or more commercial painting companies as a one-on-one -on -one coach. And he also facilitates masterminds. Sorry, I think this ranging is a typo. The companies Scott consults range from $500,000 a year to $4 million a year and growing. So that's kind of his sweet spot which makes Scott a perfect partner for me. So Scott's the head coach. I'll get into what I did with him in a minute, but, uh, and, and how we built some things together. But then there is another big thing that everyone wants to know about commercial, which is how do I read blueprints? How do I estimate from blueprints? And, you know, getting into more details on the gen general contracting uh, side of this market. And that's Greg. So Greg Miller um, was referred to me by Scott and others. So Greg was also highly recommended and has a track record of success for the last several years. He's been building his own painting company. So Greg does all work. All he does is work for general contractors and some big jobs. He did BMW's manufacturing facility for $550,000. Um, he's doing well over a million a year with no marketing budget. Um, so he's been building his own painting company while also training painting contractors, how to accurately estimate from blueprints. So in, in our painting business pro course, Greg uh, and his head estimator, Richard, um, come in to teach you everything about blueprint reading and estimating and how to work with GCs. And um, so Greg and Richard started a estimating company a few years back, and they were just doing estimate blueprint estimates for painting contractors. And then their clients, the painting contractors, started to want to know how to do it themselves. So Greg and Richard started teaching them. And after they started teaching all these people one by one, then they created a course and they've led that course, that estimating course several times. And 
that's the course I brought him in to teach in this program. So he has trained over a hundred painting contractors to bid and estimate from blueprints. He's built a million dollar plus company, which grows every year. And he spends zero dollars on marketing. He's bid over a hundred million dollars in projects from blueprints or, or nearly a hundred million. I think he said over 75 million, probably not quite a hundred million. So he knows his stuff with it when it comes to that. And then I'm the third person who is, who is a part of this course. But as you know, I'm not the commercial painting expert. My job was the facilitator. As I mentioned at the beginning, what I'm really good at is I'm really good at building systems that are very easy to follow. I'm very good at making things simple so that it's easy to follow. And um, that's my job here. I'm the system builder. I'm the facilitator. And I run painting companies and I'm building this for my own business. So I'm like the rubber meets the road guy. I make it simple, systemized, and easy to follow and execute. So I'll give you a couple examples of, you know, scope of work and project planning. So the way we did this whole thing in, in this whole, pro, this whole course is we have these, we have all these training videos. So actually I'll, I'll get to this in a minute. So the way we did this course is I said, okay, Scott, so the first thing I need to know, and we mapped out kind of the, the main sessions in the program. And what we need to start with was market segments and terms and definitions and understanding who my customers are and how to target them and what jobs I want, what jobs I don't want. And that was like session one. So I talked to Scott and me and Scott worked together for hours to put together the first webinar outline with the slides and everything. Then Scott gets on, does the webinar. And then we're like, okay, well, the second session needs to be building your commercial foundation. So how do we need to change our website and our marketing message and our social media? And how do we need to set up our CRM and our emails? And what temp, what should the temp, the emails say, the newsletters say, and what should, how should we make this announcement to our existing customers that we do commercial now and all this foundational stuff. So me and Scott, we made the whole webinar PowerPoint together over a couple of weeks. Scott gets on, he goes through the webinar. We, then we did the same thing for sales. Then we did the same thing for building a good scope of work document. And then we did the same thing for planning out a project and the same thing for contracts. So we have all these different lesson sections that Scott and I built together to get what's in Scott's head out so that you can get trained. So there's one of our, our sessions that's all about project planning. And Scott talks for about an hour and a half. He's got great slides. You have access to the slides. You can watch his webinar. And in an hour and a half, I remember sitting there watching some of these sessions thinking, oh my God, this one session is worth this whole course. This is going to save me tens of thousands of dollars, what I just learned. And so Scott's just going to blow your mind with what he's going to teach in an hour and a half on project planning. And you're going to get done with that webinar and you're like, that was awesome. Like, okay, that but that was a lot of information. Like, what do I do with that now? So what I did is I spent hours and hours and hours going through everything Scott covered, making the document and the checklist. So in the course, you've actually got documents and checklists. So I took Scott's whole session on building a scope of work and then wrote a five page standard operating procedure for everything you need to consider and some notes and details about it. And then I made a checklist that you literally print and fill it out to make sure you don't miss anything or you fill it out digitally. So there's about 40 or 50 documents or checklists in this course, exactly how you set up your social, your LinkedIn page, exactly what message you send. How do you find the people to send messages to? How do you message them? How frequently do you message them? What do you say? How do you get more introductions? We have email scripts. We have the contract template, contract example. We've got all your terms and conditions. We have job specific safety plan outlines. We've got daily in progress checklists for what do you do every day of the job? How do you manage change orders? warranties, tenant notices, and a bunch of templates for your tenant notices. Like literally everything that Scott covers, I went and built a document for. So in the course, there's kind of these three sections that we've put together. We've got the training videos. So the training videos are two parts. First, it's Scott's webinars. And most of the webinars were like three sections or up to like six or seven sections. So we broke that out. So you can go and say like, okay, well, I want to watch the sales portion, 
there's maybe like five 20 minute videos in there with Scott teaching the different aspects to sales and making sure you're bidding the right project and how to close and how to do on sites and blah, blah, blah. So we've got all Scott's webinars, but then right below those. So right below the project planning, you learn with Scott, then you've got my video. And my video is only about three minutes long because it's like, okay, guys, here's the document I made that summarizes everything Scott just taught you. This is how you fill it out. This is how you use it. There you go. I'm done. So not only are you going to get all the education, but then I'm going to give you the done system ready to execute, which I can't tell you how many hours I spent putting that together. And I did it for my own company. And now you've got access to it too. So there's been hundreds of hours put into this program. So we've got all the training videos. They're hosted online, pre-recorded, ready to go. We've got all the documents and checklists hosted online in your members area, ready to go. And then we've got support. So the support is we've got a Facebook group. So if you have daily uh, questions on day-to-day -day basis, you post them in the Facebook group and you get answers from Scott or Greg, or maybe me, but those guys, most of the time I'm going to say, Hey, that's Scott will answer this better than I will. And then we've also got weekly or monthly webinars. So every, as of right now, every Wednesday, or uh, I'm sorry, every first Wednesday of the month, Scott does a webinar. Every third Wednesday of the month, Greg does a webinar. And every second or fourth Wednesday of the month, I bring in a guest. So Matt is going to be a guest and come and talk about how he's built his commercial business. I'm going to bring in Rich, this, the guy who does all the public schools. He's going to talk. I'm going to bring in a couple of people I interviewed when I was learning about this to talk about their niche in this business. I'm going to bring in some people on estimating large repaints. So we're going to keep bringing in all these other uh, monthly webinars. And once things really get humming, um, we'll probably have uh, Scott do a couple of these a month. Um, Scott's super generous with him, you know, his, how much he gives. He's awesome. So basically these webinars, these ongoing webinars that happen every single month are included for you. And they're designed for two purposes. One is we'll keep creating some content for the next six months. There's some things we want to build out even more. So we will do that. But the main focus of these webinars is Q&A. It's for you to show up and get support, get your questions answered, have Scott review a contract, have him review a project plan, have him say, hey, I've got this other opportunity. Should I pursue it or not? Hey, I'm trying to win this. You know, We're trying to win a $700,000 project right now. Scott has been super helpful. It's narrowed down to us or one other company. So just to give you an idea of how valuable this is, we had a webinar a couple of days ago with Scott and two people showed up. There's over 50 people in this program. Two people showed up and they didn't have a lot of questions. We ended the webinar an hour early. You could have gotten an hour of coaching one-on-one -on -one with Scott if you took advantage of it. So the way you use this course is you go through everything we've created and you apply it. We have checklists and things for you to follow exactly to apply everything. You literally just apply it and then you come and get help. Then you apply it, then you get help. Then you apply it, then you get help. And that's how this program works. And it's, uh, it's, it's really exciting what, what all is in here. So Ty, I mentioned her earlier. She's the one who kind of got in with a property manager um, and then got the whole strip. Um, so this is what she sent me just the other day. I'm not a painter by any means. I've never so much as painted an entire wall by myself. What I am is a businesswoman. And I recognize that to be successful, I need the proper tools, systems, and industry information. I started with Eric's residential painting program and one year later invested in the commercial painting program. These two programs have taken me from never painting a thing to successfully building a full service residential and commercial painting company. Some specific results on the new and growing commercial side include securing over 230,000 in contracts, building three full crews in two states, and most importantly, being able to recognize some red flags with a deal that I otherwise would have accepted and would have sunk my company. I'm forever grateful for these tools that have given me the confidence to go after big commercial jobs that I never would have imagined being a consideration. Really, really amazing stuff. So she started, uh, she's been, she started the program in June and as of her writing this, it was uh, early, basically very early November. So it was June, July, August, September, October, five months in, she's gotten $230,000 in contracts. And 
she started this program when we hadn't built it yet. So we didn't even get through all the training with Scott until mid August. Just to put that in context, it's not like she got the program in June and went through the whole thing really quickly. She got through the program by mid August and this is the result she's already produced really excited for her. And then Kevin O'Brien was in the program. This is what he had to say. It was our busy season and free time was limited. This was May uh, when he signed up. We were in the middle of a pandemic and there was a lot of uncertainty. Was this really the right time to be investing in a new course? All these thoughts were running through my mind as I signed up for the PVP commercial course. The day before the class started, I almost emailed Eric and asked for a refund because I wasn't sure the timing was right for me to take this on. I'm glad I silenced my fears and took action. My goal was modest. I wanted to land enough commercial work to pay for the course. I'm a little more than halfway through the course and already we've booked over $63,000 in commercial work. In addition, we've landed a new property management account that will yield about 3000 a month in business. The ROI on this course is off the charts. So really excited. I could go on and on, but just in the interest of time, um, we're going to get to the Q and a in a minute, but why, why now um, is a good question. You might ask is why, why do this now? So um, there's a few things I want to mention. So the first thing is everything I showed you up above the training videos, documentation support, we're going to continue to build content for this course. And we're going to continue doing monthly webinars for right now. You get lifetime access to all of that. Okay. All the existing content and the new content, and you get lifetime access to the support. That's kind of crazy that we're offering lifetime access to support. Um, so that's not going to last for very long. So now is the time to get in for lifetime access. So you can still be getting coaching and support from Scott three years from now. Um, the other good reason here would be to plant the seeds now and be ready when the opportunities come. You know, if you're in this business, if you're running a residential company, you're going to get opportunities. You're just going to, you know, you're going to do, you know, you're, you're going to have a property manager call you. You're going to have, you know, a building owner reach out to you. You're going to have an investor reach out to you. You're going to have an HOA reach out to you, or you're going to do a residential job for someone who works at a property management company or works for a commercial real estate agent or investor, or you're going to do a project for a, you know, a, um, uh, president of an HOA, like you're going to run into opportunities. That's how Foothills has the, you know, we did those apartments and we have that condo one and a couple other relationships because we just stumbled into them. And when that happens, you want to be ready to capitalize on them the way we've talked about. You want to be, and you want to be able to know do I want to work with this person? Do I want to do this commercial project? That's the first thing. Because if you don't have this education, you know, just like Ty said, you know, I most importantly being able to recognize some red flags with a deal that I otherwise would have accepted and would have sunk my company. That you either, if you don't know what you're doing, you'll, you either need to turn down all projects to avoid the risk or accept projects and hopefully don't accept one that can really hurt you. If you've got the knowledge, you can know what projects to accept and not accept. And when you accept them, you can do a great job, maintain that relationship and let the roots start going everywhere for you. So it's just a great best practice because this is just a great way to add on to your residential business because the opportunities will be there and you just want to be able to capitalize on them. And then of course, off season, you know, depending on when you're watching this webinar the off season or slow season is a perfect time to put this stuff in place and learn. And probably almost no matter when you're watching this, um, we'll be raising the price of the program. So, um, that'd be a, a, just a few good reasons to take action now. So here's how it works. So if you're